Hi, Michael Canales for Green Tech Media, and I'm at Orja Protonics today in Fremont, California. They've got a fuel cell that charges batteries on forklifts. Forklifts are generally driven on batteries, but you have to take the batteries out and charge them up in a warehouse. With the fuel cell, you just drive up to a filling station, fill it up in two minutes, and you're good for eight hours. Fuel cells, like the ones from Orja, generate electricity through chemical reactions. Basically, molecules flow through a membrane, and the membrane breaks them up into electrons, water, and carbon dioxide. The freed electrons are siphoned off to charge a battery. The idea is that we'll need less electricity from power plants. We're not focusing on hydrogen. We're focusing on a very commonly available form of alcohol called methanol. Yeah, people, you can buy it. Yeah. That's right. People know about, uh, or people know of methanol as wood alcohol. And uh, some of our friends from places like Tennessee and uh, Kentucky <laughs> know it fondly as uh, moonshine. We are not focusing on the automotive applications. Here, the systems that are manufactured here are used in an industry called the material handling industry, which, where, is? which is basically forklifts. Mm -hmm. Forklifts that you see at places like Walmart, Costco, Target. So typically, these are operated on batteries. So our fuel cell basically is used as a supplement, or I would say complementing the battery and enhancing the productivity of the vehicle of the forklift. Problems with the current, I would say the incumbent solution is downtime. Okay. So you have a battery, let's say in a forklift, that runs for four, five, six hours, as the case yeah. might be. You have to go through two shifts of operation. That okay. means you have to swap the battery every four hours, every five hours. Oh, so these guys drive it in, bring it in, somebody takes off the old battery, puts on a new one? Very much so, Michael, very sure, much okay. so. Yeah, All so right. you have to go through this swapping process right. half an hour each time. You do it three times a day, that's about an hour and a half of downtime. And that can cost the customer some real money. We're talking millions of dollars a year. People have been trying to bring fuel cells to the market for years, but they've mostly failed. Why? For one thing, they've tried to put them in applications where they don't belong, like portable TVs and cars. Second, they've been working with hydrogen. Why was there such a love affair with hydrogen? I, you're not a big fan of it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so hydrogen, for example, people see it as a good PR. Okay. It's, hydrogen is green. Well, you know, people don't look at it from the analysis that to create hydrogen, obviously, there are emissions that are involved with that. And there's a lot of, uh, I would say, environmental push. There's a lot of political push to go towards hydrogen as probably the green solution. Now, why, why have fuel cells taken so long? I mean, it, Gerald Ford was talking about these when he was president, right? That was 30 years ago. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, fuel cells have been around for uh, 100 years now. Okay. And uh, the aerospace, and our, I would say, the space industry started looking at the 40, 50 years ago. So there are several reasons. A, I pointed out earlier, hydrogen. Mm -hmm. The fuel itself is one of the key problems. Infrastructure around it, the availability, mm -hmm. the cost of it. Secondly, the target market. You need to choose a market where there is really a defined pain factor, where the customer says, and is banging mm -hmm. on your door saying, hey, Mr. Urja, I want this, Okay. right? Toyota and a few large manufacturers are already buying Orja's products. Next, the company will sell fuel cells to big rig companies to power the sleeping compartments of its drivers. Right now, they have to leave their engine all night so they have air conditioning or heating. Orja will also sell fuel cells to cell phone companies and others that need backup power. And although fuel cells release CO2, they're a lot greener than the other options. How green is methanol though? That, that comes up a lot. I mean, it's, sure. it's a fossil fuel or, you know, it's an alcohol, but there's carbon in it. That's right, so there is carbon in it. What we look at is what I call a well to wheel analysis. Right. From the creation of methanol to using it in the product to convert methanol into usable energy, usable electrical right. energy. And the, from the emission standpoint, it's about uh, anywhere from about 40 to 60% better than the conventional grid, for example. Really? So yes. Instead of coal burning, yeah. you know, charging your batteries in the grid? But the big question, how does it drive? It's much faster in reverse, but it's much tougher to drive. I'm Michael Canellis for Green Tech Media.